There are countless bands and artists who are truly unique and special, who don't get as big as they should have. It sucks, but it happens more than you would think. You have a great band that makes interesting music, puts on great shows, has great personality, and for whatever reason they just don't get big. Whether it be record label chicanery, struggles within the band, or being too ahead of their time, they either implode or quietly fade into obscurity. And it's extra crazy because a lot of these bands are your favorite band's favorite band. <sighs> the world is unfair sometimes. Hello and welcome back to another video. If you're new here, I'm Trevor and I am eternally uncool. I make videos about music, music culture, and anything that interests me, but mostly music right now. So if that sounds like something you'd be into, then I highly recommend subscribing to the channel and watching the rest of this video. I don't remember how I got into Foxy Shazam, but I do remember them being moderately big at some point. I remember they had songs playing on TV, they had songs playing during sporting events that I never went to. They were touring with bands I liked, like Panic at the Disco and The Strokes. And when I did finally dive deeper into their music, I discovered that they were one of the most interesting bands I had ever heard up to that point. They had this big rock sound, and Eric Nally's vocals were truly unique. And his performance style was just so crazy, something a young Trev had never seen before. They never sounded the same on any of their albums, going from post-hardcore to glam rock to new wave. They were truly one of the most unique bands of the 2000s. But what happened to them? Today, I intend to figure that out. Today, I'm going to take a deep dive into Foxy Shazam's history. I'm going to look at their early years, their success in the 2000s, their association with huge names, their hiatus, and their return in the 2020s. I've been wanting to make this video for a long time, so I'm super excited on this one. So, grab a drink, grab a snack, get comfy. You comfy? Let's get into the video. Like most great things in the 2000s, Foxy Shazam has its roots in new metal. Train of Thought was formed in 1997 in Cincinnati, Ohio by Eric Nally, who was later joined by guitarist Lauren Turner in 2003. They self-released an EP, which is kind of more like a demo consisting of only three songs. I didn't know Foxy Shazam started out as a new metal band. I always assumed that they started out as a kind of experimental post-hardcore band. But I can't say that I'm disappointed. This EP actually fucking rips. I didn't know that Eric Nally, who usually sounds like this, I'm a wannabe, I'm a wannabe angel, could also sound like this. There's footage of the band at this time, and it's really funny to see. Eric looks so new metal that it's like he was manufactured in a factory somewhere. He had this funky chin strap goatee combo, crazy hair, and the speaking voice of a small child. This is about because one time I went to McDonald's. Now this was, what, Don't what did you say, three years ago? We went to McDonald's, took a little trip. It was me, I think my mom, and someone else. I, someone, who was that? My friend down the street, uh, Landon was working there, and he said, do you want to start a band? I said, sure. Is that really what happened? Yeah, hey, you didn't fucking tell me that. I call him, and it's about John Sims. No, wait, I, I have a request. What? I want to hear Little Babies. Once there was a little baby. After losing several key members, Train of Thought eventually changed her name to Foxy Shazam. The name came from a saying from Eric Nally's childhood. Nally said, I grew up in Cincinnati, Ohio, and was one of two white boys in an all-black high school. 
The band name Foxy Shazam came from a saying in my high school meaning, cool shoes. If you had cool shoes, kids would say, those are Foxy Shazams. Because of this, we have a lot of soul and try to let it bleed through our music as much as possible. When they became Foxy Shazam, they changed their style from new metal to a kind of post-hardcore sound reminiscent of bands like the Blood Brothers or Fear Before. Foxy Shazam still consisted of Eric Nally and Lauren Turner, but now included drummer John Sims, madman keyboardist Skylar White, and bass player Skylin Olenkamp. Foxy Shazam would go through a few lineup changes as their career went on, but this was the initial lineup when they released their debut album, The Flamingo Trigger. Flamingo Trigger was released in 2005 and it shows. It has these long Fallout Boy-esque song titles that don't really have anything to do with the lyrical content, like My Wife's Juice and Water Tower Wine. I'll use my dinner table manners, it's my wife's juice and water tower wine. I'll use my dinner table manners. They sound similar to a lot of experimental post-hardcore bands and scrams acts that were coming out around this time, but I think they were a lot weirder than those other bands. Lots of screaming, but also really interesting instrumentation, a lot of good hooks, and Eric's vocals are just crazy. He doesn't scream as much as he did on the Train of Thought demos, but he does a pretty decent job and has some really interesting inflections. <laughs> This album is super interesting not only because it's so unique from the rest of Foxy's discography, but also because it's just a really solid post-hardcore album. It really shows what the band is capable of. After releasing the Flamingo Trigger, the band toured the US between 2005 and 2007. In 2008, they signed to Ferret Music. On Ferret, they released their second album, introducing Foxy Shazam. They upped the production quality, but it still has that really good experimental, kind of sassy, post-hardcore sound. It's energetic from the get-go. This album is definitely a lot more anthemic than Flamingo Trigger. It really shows where Foxy was going with their cartoonish theatrics. And I mean cartoonish in the most positive way possible. Whereas Flamingo Trigger was more of a strictly post-hardcore album, Introducing really incorporates more elements of pop rock and glam and arena rock. Like the lead single, Dangerous Man, would fit in real nicely with other melodic post-hardcore of the time. The whole album is just so unique from anything else that came out around the same time. That same year, the band would also be listed in Alternative Press's 100 Bands You Need to Know. In 2010, they were included in Spin's 10 Bands You Need to Know. They would go on to tour with bands like The Darkness, The Strokes, Hole, Panic at the Disco, and The Young Veins. Foxy was really starting to take off. That same year, Eric Nally and Justin Hawkins of The Darkness co-wrote some songs for the legendary Meatloaf. Eric Nally writing songs for Meatloaf makes so much sense. Meatloaf had the same kind of cartoonish theatrics that Foxy has. In early 2010, Foxy Shazam signed to Sire Records, and this scrappy, weird little post-hardcore piano rock band would soon be propelled to greater heights. Okay. 
After signing to Sire, the band released their biggest single up to that point, Unstoppable. This song was used during first half highlights for Super Bowl 44, as well as NHL 11. The song was also frequently used in commercials for the MLB network, and was the theme song to Tower Prep, one of the live action shows that Cartoon Network was pushing on us in the 2010s. This song was absolutely huge. You could say it was... unstoppable? Oh, brother, this guy stinks! Their self-titled third album, released in 2010, ditches the post-hardcore sound of their previous two albums in favor of a more glam rock and arena-ready sound. It was produced by Rob Cavallo and John Feldman, two of the biggest producers of all time, with Cavallo known for albums like The Black Parade and American Idiot and John Feldman, known for his work with bands like Goldfinger and The Used and Good Charlotte. So there was a lot of talent behind this album. This album really sees Foxy trying different things. From bombastic songs like the opening track, aptly titled Bombs Away, to songs with a kind of 50s rock and roll vibe like Teenage Demon Baby. There's also songs that have a kind of soulful, R&B flavor, like Connect. Eric's vocals are less screamy on this album, instead opting for something between Michael Jackson and Freddie Mercury. At this point, the band was starting to get a lot of attention. They played Lollapalooza. They were spotlighted at the 2011 Vans Warp Tour. They were being featured in practically every alternative music magazine. They were getting so big, in fact, that they moved from Sire Records to IRS Records, home of alternative legends R.E.M. On IRS, Foxy Shazam released their fourth album, The Church of Rock and Roll, in 2012. It takes the cartoony glam rock and cranks it up to even cartoonier levels. And production from The Darkness's Justin Hawkins really helps to elevate this album with rock and roll flair. The singles on this album are kick-ass and just perfect rock singles. They're big, buoyant, catchy, and fun. In fact, the first single off of this album is an ode to... <sighs> You know what? I'll let them explain it. This is just a fun song about a topic that I think we can all get behind. Pun intended. I Like It became the band's highest charting single, peaking at number five on the modern rock charts. These songs really showcase why the band got as much attention as they did. Foxy Shazam was killing it. They opened for The Darkness, then went on their own headlining tour in 2012, then opened for Slash on his 2012 North American tour. It seemed like Foxy was exactly what their hit single described. Unstoppable. In March of 2014, Foxy announced that they had completed work on their fifth studio album and had intended on releasing it later that same month. Gonzo was released for free on the band's Bandcamp, which marks their first self-release since their debut album. This album was... an experiment. They recorded it live in one room with legendary producer Steve Albini. Guitarist Lauren Turner and bassist Daisy actually switched roles. It, it was interesting, to say the least. Gonzo is Foxy's shortest album, consisting of only nine tracks 
coming in at around 30 minutes. I can't put my finger on it, but there's something off about this album. It sounds like Foxy, but it also doesn't. It's less bombastic and features a more prog rock, new wavy sound. I don't hate it, but I also don't super love it. It's probably the band's weakest album, if I'm being completely honest. Sputnik Music rated it a 2.5 with the headline, just because it's free doesn't mean you're not allowed to complain. The review goes on to call the mixing flat, the rhythm section placid, and Steve Albini's production rudimentary. Alternative Press said that the band giving away the album for free felt like damage control, calling it self-indulgent and messy. Gone is most of the pizzazz and moxie of the Six Pieces' previous release and their phenomenal live shows and in its place is a slightly downbeat, mellower sound that doesn't do the lively band a lot of justice. Maybe they'd just gotten a little bit too big for their britches and thought they could do whatever they wanted. And then Hubris kind of slapped them in the face. It happens all the time. In October of 2014, the band announced via Facebook that they were going on an indefinite hiatus. This came just mere days before the band was to go out on the second leg of their Gonzo tour. Everybody in Foxy Shazam kind of felt like we had gotten to the point where if we were to step into something right away, it wouldn't be what it needed to be in terms of changing it up and just being as good as we wanted it to be. The whole agreement was we were just going to take a break until the time was ready. And with that, Foxy Shazam was no longer unstoppable. You have been stopped. <clears throat> now, I know what you're thinking. What does the thrift shop rapper have to do with a 2000s alternative rock band? Surprisingly, more than you think. After Foxy disbanded, Eric Nally would be featured in Downtown, the lead single off of Macklemore's second album, This Unruly Mess I Made, the follow-up to his Grammy-winning The Heist. Ryan Lewis, Macklemore's longtime production partner, was apparently a huge fan of Foxy Shazam, as well as Eric Nally's wild performing style, which included eating cigarettes. Yeah, you heard that right. He ate cigarettes. Ryan thought these antics and Eric's vocal style would be perfect for the song. Nally said of the exchange, they called me and asked me to do the song based on them being fans of my work and me being a fan of them. We shared a trumpet player who knew we'd get along. I wouldn't have gone for something I didn't feel good about. This just was right. My favorite part is when they came to me, they said, we want you to be you. We want you to do your thing. We don't want you to do something we have in mind. What you can bring to the table is what we want. That really encouraged me. I remember when this song came onto my radar, I immediately checked it out because I was a big fan of both Foxy and Macklemore. I just had to see what this team up was like. And I wasn't disappointed. Nally would actually perform the song with Macklemore live multiple times, and he is just as weird in all of them. Eventually, Nally would announce that he was working on solo material. In 2017, he released his first solo single, Ruby. He kind of scales it back a little bit on this one. He's not as boisterous and bombastic. It's a little bit cleaner, a little bit more pop. 
but it's not boring. No, not by any stretch. It's got a kind of 80s new wave vibe to it. And Nally had sole control over this, so it's not like he was doing something just to please a label. He wrote the lyrics, directed the video, and curated the aesthetic all himself. This was him with creative freedom. And I really think that freedom helped him as an artist. Eric Nally would work with Macklemore again, writing the opening track for his album Gemini in 2017 called I Ain't Gonna Die Tonight. And he would also make an appearance in the video for Macklemore's 2022 song Maniac. But Eric Nally is not the kind of artist that can be contained in just a feature. No, he had something else in store. Something bigger. In February of 2020, Foxy posted a teaser on their Instagram and Twitter teasing the band's return. They released three singles that year, Burn, Dreamer, and The Roses. These songs are pretty good. Not as good as their older stuff, but still good. They updated their sound nicely, adding more modern pop techniques without changing what made them special. The band would lose founding guitarist Lauren Turner, replacing him with Devin Williams. They would also replace bassist Daisy with a new bass player named Trigger Warning. Yes, that is his name. As well as a new drummer named Teddy Atkins. Their comeback album was called Burn, and it's really good. I wouldn't call it my favorite, but it's not as bad as Gonzo. They released another album in 2022 called The Heart Beheads You. Now this is Foxy Shazam. This is the album they should have come back with. It's got all the Foxy trademarks. Eric's vocals, unique lyrics mixed with energetic instrumentals, catchy songs, and just a pure rock and roll vibe. The standout track is definitely the lead single, Dancing With My Demons. It's just pure Foxy. Dancing with my demons, trying to conceal my boner. Since their return, the band has been touring like crazy. And they're also getting some more attention. Their song, Welcome to the Church of Rock and Roll, was used in the trailer for the DCEU show, Peacemaker. They even remastered the Flamingo Trigger. So it looks like Foxy have officially returned. And that is awesome. I'm Lady Gaga! Foxy Shazam is probably the most interesting band to come out of the 2000s. There really isn't any other band that sounds like them, or looks like them, or even performs like them. They've got a style and vibe that's all their own, and they're not stuck in a specific genre. They've toured with emo bands, indie acts, and rock and rollers. They're pretty much the perfect band. And Eric Nally is a criminally underrated frontman. They should have been bigger, but I guess the world just wasn't ready for them. What do you think of Foxy Shazam? Do you know them? Do you like them? Let me know in the comments. That's gonna do it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, then I highly recommend smashing the like button and sharing this video with everyone you know. I'm trying to get to 500 subscribers by the end of the year, and every like, every comment, every share, any interaction with this video at all really helps to get it pushed out to more people who might be into what I'm doing. Someone's car alarm is going off. I hope it's not mine. With all that being said, thank you for watching. As always, I'm Trevor. Stay uncool. That's the end of the video. Goodbye.